So here is a demonstration. Long story short, I'm rendering with EV. EV render engine does not support shader displacement directly, which means if you are having a displacement map or height map, you have to use either displace modifier or geometry nodes modifier nowadays. Both of these methods require geometries, which means you have to subdivide your meshes for tens of amount of time in order to get a good enough resolution for your final result. And it will significantly slow down your computer. That's why many people started to use an alternative shaded displacement method in EV. As far as I know, this method was the most initially proposed by BBB19 on Twitter. And he shared his files for free as well. So thanks for his development and uh, inspiration. In the most initial method, he used the array modifier and the displacement modifier. He changed all these kind of settings. So finally, he are transporting the UV information to the shaders for all these kind of displacement methods. With the development of geometry nodes, I updated the entire methods and created these single nodes and another shader displacement nodes. But the most of the control actually lands into these uh, single nodes. And this is the demonstration for it. So here we are having a default plane. Uh, let's go to the edit mode and uh, delete everything. Let's add a new plane that you know it only contains four vertices. However, it does not look like anything with just the four vertices because of this high resolution displacement. You see just by looking at its edges. There are two kinds of settings which is important for this field volume node. Uh, this is the core of our shader displacement. One is the count, which is controls the resolution. Uh, count 100 is uh, more than enough, I would say. And never use these nodes with a high dense mesh. One, this is not necessary. Two, it will slow down your computer significantly. Uh, the second setting is that this maximum displacement, you can control that however you want. It's just a nice, simple, and easy. We also need to output this gradient value to the shaders. And this attribute is being called a D. I said that D because it stands for displacement. Another important issue, however, is that this shader displacement node, it does not expose these attributes to the group input, which means you cannot control that outside. So, yeah, this is it. So let's take this D as, as a kind of a fixed attribute for this kind of function. This node is pretty simple. It only contains three nodes. There are two other nodes which is not being used. I just keep them for whatever reason. There is also a setting which is called a strength, but I do not recommend you to actually control this strength whatsoever because it's uh, meaningless. I've normalized every values from the this gradient, so this strength becomes basically useless. Increasing that does not bring any benefit, decrease that only waste your count. So there are many different kind of image texture that you can actually play around, uh, but I think it's uh, most importantly just to play around this uh, JS displacement. Uh, so let's take a uh, JS displacement. Because if you have ever worked with JS displacement, you probably know how difficult to work with it. It's very difficult to have all this kind of nice result because all these kind of right angles are the enemy of our displacement. You have to have high resolution mesh or high density mesh. It's very, very slow. And even by doing that, you will still have tons of jagginess. But now we are having real time JS displacement. This is uh, super beautiful, and you can control the amounts however you want. Oh, this is so nice. Okay. We can also play around with other texture, but I think it, it's just fine. Because this is a procedural, so we can also change all this kind of geometry, for example, into UV sphere, and we can see its effects. This is uh, amazing. And uh, by disabling this ambient occlusion, you can see how it uh, has been changed. There is one issue, however, one big, big issue uh, that geometry nodes tend to eliminate all this kind of UV. So if you're using UV, there will be nothing because there is no UV. So this is a very huge issue. We have to wait 
developers to fix this issue. On the other hand, there is method to transfer UV from one object to the other using geometry nodes or using other methods as well, probably. But this is beyond the scope of today's demonstration. Today's demonstration is really just to show you the progress of this shaded displacement in terms of geometry nodes. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.